You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 218 with Adam Capes. And today we're talking about getting away to give. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, Men of Abundance? I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community. And let me ask you this. Of course, it's a rhetorical question because technically you can't answer me back, or you can, but I just won't hear you. But the question is this. Do you like to get away? Do you like going on vacation? Do you like going someplace new outside of your town, at least away from your own home, sometimes out of your town, out of your state, out of the country? Well, This is part of the conversation that we have today. The other part is a very important aspect of being a man of abundance, which is giving. Giving is huge. I just can't express this enough. I talk about it all the time. All of us talk about the importance of giving of yourself, of your time, treasures, or talents, or all the above. Well, today we are combining the amazing joy and experiences of getting away and giving with an amazing organization called Get Away to Give. I'm bringing this up now because a couple times in our conversation between Adam and I, I accidentally say Gateway to Give because I was reading it off the website and I was saying Gateway to Give instead of Getaway to Give, which is partly my dyslexia. And I don't know, just Gateway is pretty seems pretty catchy to me. But anyhow, I just wanted to bring that up. And I'm telling you, man, I just absolutely love this concept I love this conversation because I love traveling. I love getting away. Even when I was in Hawaii, we used to go on little staycations. My wife and I would go down Waikiki or we'd go to the Eva side here in Florida. We're already planning some stuff to go out to the Keys, not super far away from us, but far enough away to where we can go somewhere and hang out by the lake or by the ocean or just get away. And then we like to be able to give to various organizations and give our time, treasures, and talents to other people. It's just an amazing feeling to be able to do that. And speaking of giving, you can give about two minutes of your time by leaving a rating and review on iTunes and sharing Men of Abundance with everyone you come in contact with. Doing both of those simple little tasks will take no more than two minutes. And But the payoff is huge. You can literally change somebody's life simply by sharing an amazing podcast with them, any number of podcasts out there. But specifically, I'm asking you to share Men of Abundance with others so that they can get in on these amazing conversations and leave a rating and review on iTunes because by doing so, you push us up in the search engines and more people can find Men of Abundance. You can do that by going to menofabundance.com on any one of the podcasts. Underneath the podcast player, there's a button there that says, Leave a Review. And by clicking on that button, it will take you to iTunes so that you can leave a five-star, four-star, three-star, whatever rating and review. I hope it's a five-star, but if it's not, please be honest with your review, with your rating and your review so that I can make the show better and bring on better guests. I don't know how I can do that because I've just had some amazing, some of the most amazing guests on any podcast out there have been right here on Men of Abundance. And today is absolutely no different. So take just a few minutes to do that for us. It is greatly appreciated. Now our featured guest today is co-founder and president of Gateway to Give. Adam Capes is a social entrepreneur helping people create amazing vacation experiences while changing the world of fundraising. This ambitious undertaking began when Adam was president of a luxury resident fund called Equity Estates. Now Adam helps Gateway to Give meet its mission, helping charities raise significant money and the lasting importance and memories made from meaningful vacation experiences. Men of Abundance, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Adam Capes. Adam, welcome to Men of Abundance, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Wally. How are you? I'm wonderful. Where are you at in the world? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. 
hot Atlanta. I, I was I used to, many years ago when I was stationed in El Paso. I used to go to get the pleasure of going to Atlanta for a week, once a year, to hang out with the reserve component um, for at their conference every year. And I really, really dig Atlanta. Uh, got to go to Buckhead, which was different during the day than it is at night. <laughs> yeah, it's, changed it's a, a completely lot. it does it transforms completely uh from day to night so i like that area i like that part of the world very cool what was that where you're originally from i'm originally from st louis missouri and uh went to school up in in central new york in ithaca new york and i've been in atlanta for 22 years now what got you there uh well i migrated south uh, from the endless winter of mm. Ithaca, New York, and it brought me to Atlanta. So I, I knew it was a good city for business, and the weather was much better, and uh, a lot of people were moving here at the time, and it was right around... Actually, I moved here in 1996, uh, in the beginning of 96, which is... Uh, you may recall the uh, Summer Olympics were held here mm -hmm. that summer, and I, I was excited to kind of be in Atlanta during the Olympics. So it was a fun time. Yeah, I bet. Wow, yeah, we were just talking about that with the World Cup going on and coming to an end. I don't know what the heck I'm going to do after that. Um, but um, <laughs> at the time, that this conversation is going on anyway. But my, my boys and I were talking that we would like to get to an Olympics one of these days, depending on where it's at, of course. Well, you got to wait, I guess, eight years, and then the World Cup will be in North America, and maybe they'll be playing some games in Florida or Georgia. Man, that'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. So before we get too much into our conversation, I like to start out with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today, Adam? Man, Wally, I have so much to be grateful for. I really try and uh, focus on that every day as well, uh, but... I, I would say today I am grateful for all of the incredible individuals out there that I get to meet and work with and help who are just serving and giving of themselves to help other people in the nonprofit sector. Yeah, wow. And I look forward to getting into that because that was one of the exciting, you know, one of the things that really excited me about getting you on the converse, into a conversation for Men of Abundance because – I absolutely thrive on people who are uh, around people who are just giving of themselves and, and, you know, giving back to the community. It's absolutely amazing. That is a lot to be grateful for, for sure. So how would you describe yourself? I'm a, uh, I'm a visionary type. Um, and I've had to really understand who I am so that I don't try and so I can stay focused on what I'm good at within my company. Um, I was just talking about this with somebody else uh, funny enough about kind of playing your position. And, uh, and I, I've got to be careful not to try and play other positions too much. Um, but I'm, I'm a big picture thinker. I'm a, uh, I'm an out of the box thinker. Um, I'm, I, I view business as kind of my, uh, palette to paint on, uh, to borrow, a, a a term from Warren Buffett. Um, I really like the creativity of, of business and, um, and I try and, and get, uh, people on our team to fulfill their potential, to not have limiting beliefs and uh, to really see that anything is possible for them. And, um, you know, I also try and get our, our, our customers to, to see that too and uh, really just take advantage of all, everything that, uh, you know, this life offers. Man, that is a mouthful, and that is like right in line with who we are here at Men of Abundance. It is just so – but one of the things that you started off with was that you really like to make sure that you stay within your – area of expertise and that's where i see so many people they dilute themselves especially in business because i do deal a lot with business owners and and they're just trying to do so many different things and maybe one or two of those things are what they're great at and what they should be doing um and everything else they should either uh delegate or outsource 
or otherwise <laughs> find somebody else to do that because they're either just not good at it or it's just taking away from their time of doing the things that they are good at. At what point That's, did you make that revelation that that was important for you in your life? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, well, I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett, and, and he ta- he calls it a, you know being in your circle of competence. For mm-hmm. him, that means he only invests in companies that he understands. He doesn't get into the fads and technology companies and things that he doesn't understand. And uh, I think that's a great lesson, you know, in just in running companies and, and in life as well. Um, I, I read, I, I read a lot of books. I read a book uh, a number of years ago called The E-Myth, mm-hmm. a pretty, pretty popular book. Uh, it stands for the entrepreneurial myth. And it talks about, you know, the need to, you may be good at one thing, but a lot of businesses aren't able to grow and thrive because the owner tries to do everything and, uh, and doesn't delegate and bring in people um, to, to do the things that they are not great at. Um, and I, I just continue to try and remind myself of that every day to try and hire people that are much smarter than me, which isn't that difficult. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, me and both. Hire people that are better better than me in different areas of, of the business. Mm-hmm. And I think if you can surround yourself with great people, you know, that's more than half the battle. Man, that is huge. That is absolutely huge. Nemeth is a great, great book. I know there's been additional editions uh, put out since that first one. Uh, updates, anyhow. But, yeah, absolutely great book to get a hold of. Uh, for all of you guys out there, especially the business owners, because uh, the entrepreneur myth, that's the big thing, you know, that most guys end up, you know, working, they they end up owning a job, it, you know, 12 hour days, six, seven days a week. Who wants to do that, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we, we have um, uh, a big, hairy, audacious goal of, of raising a billion dollars every 10 years for charities. And, uh, I know that there's no way we can ever achieve that without a ton of help and effort and work on the part of a lot of very driven and talented individuals. And I'm, I'm just constantly on a mission to, to find those folks who want to be a part of our team and, uh, and, and help us grow this thing. Yeah, that's amazing. And we're going to get into that for sure, because we're going to talk about Gateway to Give here in just a minute. But before we do, I really want to get into that kick in the gut moment. The reason why is because many times when I have these conversations, this kick in the gut moment kind of pushes them, pushes many people into what they're currently doing in life. (laughs) And I don't know if that's the case with you or not. But in the event that that is the case, I want to go through the kick in the gut moment first. And, uh, you know, kind of really make us feel that kick in the gut moment and then what did you do to recover from that sure i've had a lot of kick in the gut moments so it was hard for me to identify just one but uh, i would say uh, one that comes to mind very quickly for me was a time uh probably four years ago i was sitting down with my business partner at the time and another gentleman who had a lot more experience in kind of corporate America. Uh, I knew him pretty well. He was very close with my business partner, really respected him. And um, he basically told me that I was not up to the task or doing a good job really as CEO and that I really you know, shouldn't be CEO. I shouldn't be running the company. Um, and I had to take a hard look at myself and – and 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 determine you know what what was I doing that uh, was working and what was I doing or not doing that that was holding us back and um, ultimately I determined that after three companies of having business partners that didn't really work out for me um, I I had to kind of take the make a move so that I was running the business on my own. And I think I had always been scared of that and uh, always wanted to have a business partner just to kind of be in the trenches with me. And um, I just realized that, you know, maybe I'm not a great business partner and uh, I I needed to kind of do things my way. 
And so I separated from uh, my business partner at Getaway to Give. And we're actually, I think, closer now than we were as business partners. I think he's happier. I'm happier. And um, but that was definitely a kick in the gut to kind of have to look in the mirror and say, wow, you you really uh, are not doing well in this partnership and you're doing some things that are not allowing the company to uh to go where it needs to go what were some of those things if you don't mind my asking um i think i was uh i, I was a little too optimistic and spending money maybe at, at um a pace where i i think i i finally realized someone had told me this and uh I've been told a number of times that it costs about twice as much as you think it's going to cost. Mm. And um, it takes twice as long as you think it's going to take mm-hmm. when, when launching companies. Uh, I can now say after doing this a few times that I think that is an understatement. <laughs> I think it probably is like four to ten times as much and as long. But um I, I think I, I'm an optimist. I'm kind of an eternal optimist. And I, I think I've always held the view that, you know, whatever I dreamt up was going to come to fruition. And I think, interestingly, it usually does. It just costs a lot more and takes a lot longer than I initially want. Um, so I, I've learned that you can you can plant the seed uh, but you can't make that tree grow faster than it's going to naturally bloom. Yeah, that, that and that is is so true. And that's where so many businesses get in trouble because we all want, it's like, you know, having a kid, raising a child. You all want it to be perfect and, and grow up perfect. And they, they just don't. And they take different paths. And when they take that different path, when the business is costing more and taking longer, then people run out of money. And then that's when the business just you know, it has to either be sold or just go under because it can't be sold because it's not worth anything, quite frankly. So, right. yeah, that's just that's just a terrible situation to be in. And, and it, you know, it seems like young business owners are like teenagers. It, it, my, I'll use myself as an example. When I was a young, you know, teenager, young 20, I knew everything there was to know in the world. You couldn't tell me anything. And right. I've heard that many times before, and I've I've had to suffer the same consequences of it's going to cost more and it's going to take longer, and it certainly did. Yeah, I, I've also, uh, Wally, had a number of aha moments. I, I don't know that they were kicking the gut moments, but they were like, oh, my God, you need to do something different and take advantage of this opportunity. Um, and I had a couple with charities that kind of helped lead me to create Getaway to Give and G2G. Um, One was when I was at a former company that I started called Equity Estates, and we were, we couldn't advertise because we were a Reg D securities, um, uh, a Reg D security offering. We were a fund. And we were told, though, that, you know, you could donate trips to charities and kind of get your name out that way. So we did that. We It didn't really help us from a business standpoint, but I remember we donated a trip uh, for a week in Anguilla to the, I think it was the Samuel Waxman Cancer Foundation in New York City, and they paired it with some Delta First Class tickets, and they sold that, that one week. I thought it would sell for maybe five or $10,000, and we'd raise some serious money. It sold for $75,000. Wow. And the guy who bought the trip then donated it back. And the next year, I think it went for $85,000. And I was just blown away at how much money and the impact that we could have with, you know, a one-week luxury vacation in a private home. Um, And then we had a similar experience, uh, similar but different, in Aspen, Colorado at a Challenge Aspen event where my business partner got up and said, um, you know, I'm not going to auction off this trip, but this young family who was just uh, honored as being America's bravest family, they were on the Oprah Winfrey show, and Tom Brokaw interviewed them, and they were there. And this is a, uh, th- this may be a cause that, that may uh, strike a chord with you, because I, I know you you were in the military. 
um, and they help uh, wounded veterans and uh, returning veterans who have had um, uh, brain damage and dealing with PTSD and that kind of thing. And they, they help rehabilitate them in Aspen with skiing and horseback riding and all these amazing things. And anyway, my business partner got up there and he said, uh, I could sell this trip to one of you guys and we'd raise a little bit of money, but I don't think you really need it. Um, but how about we send this family on vacation? Now, I don't know how we're going to be able to do that because they're going to need a private jet probably because he's in a wheelchair and uh, it's going to be expensive. But I'm willing to give $1,000. Raise your hand if you're with me and you'll donate $1,000 to help this family go on a vacation to Scottsdale. And uh, I think about 40 hands went up. It was unbelievable. So instead of selling that, that trip probably would have gone for five or 10 grand. And we raised $40,000 that day. And uh, both of those were kind of kick in the gut moments for me going, hey, man, there's something here that nobody's doing that you're missing. That, like the way to really make a difference in the world and raise money for at least some organizations like these is to have great vacation experiences mm -hmm. and find a way to help other people. Um, so that the, I would say those two events really helped inspire me to, to start Getaway to Give. So let's get into that. What is Getaway to Give and how does that all work? I mean, and, and who can benefit from it? Yeah, absolutely. We are uh, the largest provider of vacation homes and private residences to the nonprofit industry. Um, and we lease properties all over in major cities like New York, London, Chicago, Miami, Montreal, San Francisco to more traditional vacation destinations like um, Mexico in places like Cabo and Punta Mita, Mexico and Playa del Carmen in the Caribbean and St. Martin and Belize and the Bahamas in Costa Rica, and then ski properties um, in uh, Aspen and Beaver Creek and Deer Valley. Um, and so destinations like that. We, we do long-term leases. And then uh, it's, we're kind of like a Costco of vacations. So we're buying uh, vacations in bulk wholesale by doing long-term leases. And then we'll sell... Uh, you know, five day, four night stays uh, at charity events. And then we have members that that uh, use our properties and vacation with us every year. And uh, everybody gets great deals, stays in private residences that we've hand selected. And at least on the charity side, um, which is uh, over 80 percent of our business, it, it's really helped us uh, raise now over $12 million for hundreds of amazing causes. And we're growing exponentially, and we feel like we can get to that $1 billion number. Wow, that's amazing. That is truly amazing. I have, you know, just been able to get acquainted with and get to know many different types of charities, and so many of them are just so creative. But that is I just find that super creative and, and that you're I would have never considered that you'd be able to use vacation properties for, um, you know, for not for uh, for charities and stuff. It's just really cool that you're doing that. Yeah, we, we re, you know, I, I think I realized at some of those events that I mentioned that uh, there's just there's something about travel and vacations that appeals to people at charity events. It, it has a very broad appeal. So when you think of all the things that someone could buy at a charity event in a live auction or silent auction uh, or raffle that can raise substantial money, um, we consistently saw that vacation experiences, especially private homes, uh, was the number one money getter. But the challenge is it's not easy for most organizations to get amazing private homes donated and when they do you know it's not run as a business it's some board member or some donor donating their house for a week but it's you're still staying in their house it's not set up like a boutique hotel if you will 
Mm-hmm. So because we're able to run this like a business, and we're, you know, we contact the winners right after they win. We make sure uh, we have con- a concierge team. Uh, I mean, it's a whole professional turnkey solution for charities. So they don't have to go out and just kind of take whatever they can get. They can choose from, we have 34 different residences right now that we lease in 24 different destinations. And we have packages that allow someone to choose from, you know, five different beach destinations or uh, a number of different city destinations or everything that we've got. So we're able to actually sell these trips oftentimes not once, not twice, but five times, 10 times, 15 times and raise substantial money for organizations. We say usually, you know, we target between $10,000 and $100,000 and it occurs very quickly in about three minutes in a live auction. Our record is one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars in about three minutes. Oh my goodness! And you know, as you're saying that, as you're talking about these vacation experiences, the whole term experience is really what the selling point is. Because in my mind, anyway, because like you said, in many auctions, you know, there's cars, paintings. I mean, you name it, all kinds of stuff. There's, you know, restaurant, you know, different foods and whatnot, but when you're talking about giving somebody else an experience or even creating an experience for yourself, uh, that's just so much more appealing because as I always say, we should always be collecting experiences over stuff and because the, the experiences just last longer, you know, and it, it, it seems just much more exciting than stuff. Isn't that true? It, it, and they get better over time. Yeah. I mean, I, I drive a, a car that, that I love and when I first got it, I was so excited and it was great, but I don't love it as much today as I did when I first got it. The kind of the luster and the novelty wears off, but the vacation experiences I've gone on with friends or family members, uh, we still talk about those and those get better over time. Like, like kind of like a good wine, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we talk about that a lot. Uh, We're all about, um, experiences and you know the stuff you can't take the stuff with you but those memories you, you just never lose those and and they do I think age really well um, I, I actually remember and I talk about this with um, with w- charity trip winners who who buy our, our packages at charity events and our members all the time um, because I think a lot of Americans when they think about vacations they kind of, the default is that family vacation. You know, where do I go over Christmas or New Year's or spring break with my family if, if you've got children? So um, I try and get people to think outside of that and think about like going on trips with just a father-son trip or a father-daughter trip or mother-son, mother-daughter, just kind of two people where the child can get that one-on-one attention that they really crave if they've got siblings, that they're probably not getting on a family vacation. And uh, I was lucky enough that my dad used to take me on a trip every year. We would actually go to the Liberty Bowl in Memphis and um, and stay at the Peabody Hotel and, and see my grandfather who lived pretty close to there. And I'll never forget those. I mean, those memories are, are so important to me. You know, and I, there's no item that I got when I was 10 years old that has that kind of meaning that those trips had. So I talk all the time about go out there and travel and take trips with people that you love and you care about and go on one on one trips with your son or daughter and take friends on vacations because, you know, it goes by way too quick. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And you know, it's kind of interesting, because when I was looking at your website earlier, it reminded me of something that I was thinking of when I was back in Hawaii that I wanted to do once I got back here to the mainland, uh, which was this, um, this, it was a getaway experience where basically you just tell them what you like and and how long you want to stay and how much money you want to spend. They create the destination, the, the, uh, the vacation for you. It could be an over, it could be a one night thing, a one day thing, uh, weekend or a week thing whatever and how far you want to go but you don't know where the destination is at or what you're doing and I just love that kind of stuff because that adds to the whole experience 
of the vacation. And I love doing stuff like that with my wife. I like to, to plan things ahead, but I also like the spontaneity of things. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, to your point about spontaneity, I, I think uh, I think that's, uh, that's something that it's kind of a lost art. I don't think people are as spontaneous as they used to be. But, you know, ha- having the ability to just say, hey, let's go on this trip that isn't planned out months in advance because most people don't think that far ahead anymore. But uh, we, we offer something called for our members called last minute getaways. Mm. So anything that's available in the next 30 days, we email them about. And uh, we've had a lot of uptake on that recently. People are really uh, becoming a little more spontaneous and booking those trips last minute. It's not exactly like what you're talking about where it's like, you know, you don't know where you're going to go and they plan this great trip for you i think that's really cool but uh it is something that you know is, is kind of coming up in the next few weeks that you can uh hopefully get away and go have a great vacation on short notice yeah absolutely i dig that and then guys you know in order to take advantage of something like that it's, it's like i would say uh you know i just i'm working from home at this point i'm absolutely loving it because i can stop what i'm doing otherwise you know not in the middle of a conversation obviously but i can you know go down the hall and you know watch spongebob with my kid or something like that or play some video games with him and stuff but it's also cool to have that opportunity to be able to get an email and say hey do you want to be in cabo in the next 30 days you know like well, hell yeah. yeah or, you know. Or, or go up to New York and go see the SpongeBob musical with your son. Right. There you go. Which I, which I just did with my family. Oh. And, uh, I have a new appreciation for, for SpongeBob. Let me tell you, mm-hmm. they brought that cartoon to life in 3D, uh, and I thought it should have won the Tony. It was phenomenal. Wow, really? I never even knew about that. That sounds like something I'll have to look into. You will have to check that out, and I'm sure your son would go crazy. There are a lot of. My 13-year-old son uh, was in heaven watching SpongeBob. Yeah, my 8-year-old um, is actually down there watching SpongeBob right now. That's why that came to mind. That's awesome. So you mentioned a couple good news stories that kind of got you started when you were with the other organization um, that kind of got you into this idea of doing G2G. What are some good news stories that you can share with us, one or two, that just really come to mind? Um, we've had some... I mean, we love getting feedback after vacation experiences. And, you know, I've heard many, many times people say this was the best vacation of my life. And that there's no there's nothing else you could tell me that that puts a bigger smile on my face when we're able to provide vacations like that for people. And, um, you know, the other good news for us is we've raised over 12 million dollars. That sounds great. It's a good number, but it's a number. It doesn't really mean anything. So we talk about, we try and talk about every week on our company calls because most of the people in our company don't live in Atlanta. They're out around the country working with organizations. So we all get on Zoom together and have a big video call. And we really try and share good news stories about how we're, you know, helping kids go to college through college scholarships or helping, uh, you know, rehabilitate wounded veterans or um, helping provide, uh, you know, pay teacher salaries at schools um, or feeding people who are, uh, you know, who are hungry or whatever. There's so many different causes out there. And I mean, I had, Wally, I had no idea before I got into this business how big and almost overwhelming the, the, nonprofit sector is and the, the 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 need is for so many different things you know from people from health and people who have diseases to um poverty homelessness um hunger uh education you name it i mean uh, there's there's so much need there it's almost overwhelming but you know to bring it back to well, how we started the podcast and one of the things that I'm grateful for today, I get to work with so many people who have become my heroes because they are devoting their their life to helping other people and making a huge difference for them. And, um, you know, I think these people, these are the people that should be uh, financially rewarded. I think it's kind of a travesty 
that the the people that are doing some of the greatest good in society, you know, aren't supposed to get paid for that, and that it all it kind of has to either be volunteer or they're they're not allowed to be financially rewarded. Um, I think that I, I just think that's backwards. Um, you know that that there's people uh, making violent video games and. And, uh, you know, it's fine for them to make millions and millions of dollars, but teachers and people who are helping uh, solve homelessness or hunger aren't allowed to make money. Um, and, uh, you know, I, so I, I think that nonprofits, um, the ones that do the best in fundraising, understand that it takes money to make money. And... Um, and that's something that, that, that we try and um, let organizations know every day is that you should invest in getting a professional benefit auctioneer. You should invest in having great items at your auction that are going to help raise more money for you. Even though we're no risk, you know, it's still an expense. Yeah, that's a whole subject right there that I've had the pleasure of having a couple conversations with people who – have kind of tried to help people in those areas um, get duly compensated for their ideas, for their effort, for their energy, for their time. It's just truly amazing. But then you got people out there um, that are, you know, some some of them like Pencils of Promise is an organization that comes to mind um, where they uh, build schools around developing countries. They've developed a business model so that 100% of what you donate to the charity side goes towards building schools and clinics or, or schools. I said schools and clinics because that's something I did in the Army, but um, building schools around these developing countries. But, oh, by the way, there's a business side that you can donate to, and the business side runs the nonprofit side. Uh, so there's business models out there. It's just it's, it's tough to, to do that, but it, it can be done in small sectors. To, to your point on Pencils of Promise, uh, that, that is an amazing business model. Adam Braun, who founded the organization, really brings a great business perspective to uh, fundraising. And, you know, he came up with a great idea of having like birthday parties or celebration mm, right. yeah. and raising money to build a school. So I actually did that for my 40th birthday. Um, and And I ended up just from friends and some of our members uh, raising $25,000 to build a school in Guatemala. And uh, I hope to someday soon get down there to, to see the school. Um, but uh, really amazingly fulfilling to be able to do that. And uh, the work that they're doing is tremendous. And I think they're playing into the fact that a lot of people want to know that if they raise $25,000, that it all goes to to build a school. But of course, the organization has to run. The people running the organization have to make money. If they want to hire more fundraisers, they've got to pay them. Uh, they've got to have a great website and all these things. So they, they have separate fundraisers where they just raise money for, for corporate. And, uh, you know, both are needed. It's, it's just, um, you know, in, in the for-profit world, we understand that it, if you put in a dollar and get out two, that's a good deal, and you keep doing that. In advertising, you keep doing that until the last dollar doesn't generate that. Um, but in the nonprofit world, it's like, okay, you're not allowed to do that. Um, there's a great uh, TED Talk by a guy named Dan Palotta, P-A-L-L-O-T-T-A, and he's written a couple books, um, one most recent one called Charity Case, and he talks about, well, his first one was called Uncharitable, second one called charity case and I think he uh, best represents and speaks to the need for charities to operate more like businesses and for us to look at them a little differently than what percentage of my donation is going to the cause and uh, overhead as a, as a bad word right yeah absolutely absolutely much there's much room to grow there and there's much um, 
we need to get people to understand that they, even though they're nonprofit, there are in fact 100% businesses that have to have money to stay alive and to keep doing what they do. So yeah, absolutely 100%. So Adam, we're at the part where we're going to pay it forward to the abundant leaders. Ready to do that? Sure. Awesome. Hey, I want to talk to you business owners out there for just a second. I know it's not easy to admit it when your baby is not doing as well as you'd hope it would at this point. But how long are you going to let your business rob you of your time and health? When are you going to do something different than what you've been doing? I'm here to tell you that you have hidden cash in your business, I promise. And I can show you how to find $10,000 to $50,000 in your business without spending another dime on marketing. Look, I'm a business and marketing strategist, and I can show you where that money is and exactly how to put it in your bank. I'm excited to share with you that I am presently putting together a No BS Business Breakthrough Mastermind Group, which will start the 19th of September, 2018. And this group is going to consist of just 12 business owners from 12 different industries. If the first group fills up, I will consider starting another group. Here's the basics of how this group is going to work. The Mastermind Group will run every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. If I do end up starting another group, then that group will meet every first and third Wednesday of the month. Now, this mastermind group is going to be a quite a bit cheaper than my usual coaching packages. The monthly fee for this mastermind group is just $249, and you will get access to my e-learning program that is worth $197 per month. You'll also get access to live weekly group coaching calls worth $500 a month. Access to my website, listen to this, with $1 million worth of business coaching and literally $2 million worth of turnkey advertising in 120 different fields and industries. You will also get assigned an accountability partner within the group with whom you can share ideas and challenge each other. As I already mentioned, this is a closed group of no more than 12 with only one business type per seat to network and grow each other's businesses. And you'll have access to a closed Facebook group where you can share ideas and mentor with each other and have access to me. There is one catch to this highly discounted rate. Businesses will be admitted by invitation only. Will be required to fill out an assessment sheet after each session, a confidentiality agreement, and will need to grant me permission to use some of the results in my next book and my new upcoming podcast. We will also track our progress and review monthly so we can watch how our businesses are growing. Again, this mastermind is significantly cheaper than my one-on-one coaching program and much more interactive than my do-it-yourself program. I would usually charge $795 per month, but because this is my first mastermind group utilizing the e-learning platform in this manner, essentially using this group as my beta group. I am willing to charge a third of the price of my usual group in exchange for your valuable feedback. If you're ready to find the hidden revenue in your business, then invest in yourself today. Send me an email to info at apmasterycoach.com to let me know that you want to secure your seat on this mastermind group before anyone else in your industry gets your seat and this very valuable information. So send me an email to info at apmasterycoach.com or get more information in the show notes of this episode. Now, let's get back to the conversation. So share one to three actionable steps that men of abundance can take today. So number one is there is an abundance of, uh, you have an abundance of time, of talent, and of treasure that you can give to causes that you care about. And uh, the best way to, well, I should say the best way. One way to give of yourself in terms of time is volunteering and uh, going and spending time helping people that you want to help. I promise you that that will be some of the most meaningful time of your day, your week, your month, your year, probably your life. Um, And the times that I've done that, I can remember them vividly. The impact that I've had on strangers, it's just been incredible. Some of the most fulfilling things things you can do. Tre- uh, talent is, you know, serve on a board, help bring ideas, go uh, support organizations, not just financially, but with 
letting them understand that there is an abundance of of everything out there and that they if they think in terms of scarcity and that you know I can't spend any money and people aren't going to donate enough to me and you know that is not going to help the cause that they care so much about but if they take an attitude of abundance and that there's enough out there for all of us um I think that you know giving them those ideas and that helping them with that mindset is a way to to use uh especially business people's talents to help benefit uh the world and then lastly and the the one that's kind of most obvious is financially um i love what warren buffett and bill gates have done uh with the giving pledge and getting their fellow billionaires to pledge to give away 50% or more of their net worth during their lifetime or upon their death. And I don't see why that needs to be limited to billionaires. I think that's something that all of us can do. And, um, it, you know, that's how we can leave the world a better place than we found it and make a difference in whatever area we're passionate about. So um, financially giving of, they say give till you till it hurts, and I, I think that, uh, you know, if you look just at numbers in the pocketbook then and kind of have a scarcity mindset, then it, it hurts. If you look at the world in terms of abundance, I think you're going to get so much more back. And, uh, and it's one of the best things you can do with the wealth that, that you create. Very well said, and I agree 100%, especially with the giving <laughs> It's one of those things that just can't be explained. Um, but the fact of the matter is you do get back tenfold. Uh, it may not be immediate, and that's what some people think when they when they hear that. But And it doesn't always come back in finances either. So just keep that in mind, guys. And when you're talking about giving, we, we talk about this a lot too. When you we talk about giving to your family, to your friends, one of the greatest gifts you can give them is your time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I talked about doing a father-son, father-daughter mother son mother daughter trip that is an incredible gift that you're giving your child of your devoted time with them that you'll remember for the rest of your life and i'm sure they will too so um yeah just understanding that there there really is no limit to the the time that we have to do these things um or the money that's out there to get to uh to to give back um or the ideas and talents that we have. Yeah, absolutely. So what daily habits make the biggest impact in your life? Uh, Wally, I've got a few that I try and do every day um, that uh, make a huge difference when I, when I do them. Uh, one is working out. I find uh, that when I get some exercise in and get the blood flowing in the morning, uh, it gets me off to a, a great start of my day. Um, Secondly, I try and write down every morning uh, my 18 long-term goals. So I keep those in the front of my uh, brain and I focus on them every day. And lastly, I try and meditate for 10 to 15 minutes every morning to, to um, just get me kind of uh, spiritually connected. And, um, and I think it, it, it gives me... In a, in, in a world that moves so fast, it's that precious time when things move slowly. <laughs> and uh, sometimes 10, 15 minutes seems like an hour. But uh, that's wonderful, and I get that stillness. So those are three things I try and do every, every day uh, in the morning to get, get off to the right start. Excellent, excellent. So what, do you, what would you recommend that our abundant leaders read or listen to and why? Wow, there's so many, uh, so many great books. Um, I, I've, I'm a big fan of uh, two brothers named Dan and Chip Heath. They've written four or five great books. The last one they wrote that uh, I love is called The Power of Moments. Um, I also like Eckhart Tolle, um, who wrote The Power of Now and A New Earth. Um, I like Wayne Dyer. Um, there's so many amazing authors and, and, and books out there. Uh, but that's, that's a few, few different authors that, that I've, uh, really enjoyed. 
Yeah, those are great choices as well. And Wayne Dyer still has a um, podcast that's airing out there. Uh, it's got a lot of really good content on it as well. I'll have to check that one out too. I haven't oh, for listened sure. to it. Yeah, I li- most of the content that I consume, I do read every morning, but I also like to uh, I listen. I consume a lot of audio books and podcasts and it's just as I'm doing stuff around the house, I don't commute anymore, which has really uh, um, cut into my into my uh, audio listening time. <laughs> so I spend more time around the house, so I, I find myself reading more than listening. But anyhow, what do you feel yeah. holds most people back from living a life of true abundance? I'd say mindset. Um, I, I think it all starts with your mindset and, and then your attitudes and beliefs. And, um, I think that the, the first thing is you, you gotta have a, a, a mindset of abundance and like, you know, go, go stand, uh, which you could do a lot faster than I can here in Atlanta, Georgia, but, you know, go stand on the beach and look out at the ocean and tell me that there's not an abundance of water, right? It's like, it's, it's unbelievable or look up at the sky and at the stars and realize how big the universe is. And, and I, I, th- I find it very difficult to believe in scarcity when you're, you know, looking at how big the universe is or how much air there is to breathe or how much money there is in the world or how much love there is in the world. I mean, it's, un- it's not quantifiable. So I think it starts with a mindset and a belief and I think the, the thing that holds all of us back as human beings is just limiting beliefs. It's just our stories that we tell ourselves of why we can't do this or that. And they're just made up stories. They're not, they're not real. And the people that really, who I think most of us admire, who achieve great things, really do so. The difference between them and others um, is that they believe that they can. And they believe in abundance and they believe that that there's enough people that will help them, enough money out there, enough ideas to get them where they want to go. Whether it's, you know, a Steve Jobs or uh, Bill Gates, Elon Musk or Martin Luther King Jr. or Nelson Mandela, all of them, you have to have a belief in abundance um, and possibility in order to, to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 100 percent agree with that. So what does living a life of abundance mean to you, Adam? It, it means uh, constantly remembering that there, there is abundance in all things. And um, sometimes I think as human beings, we, we get a little worried about having fear of certain things around scarcity. Oh, uh, the, you know, not people won't love me. I'll run out of money. Um, you know, there's, there's not enough people to help me, whatever it is. And uh, for me, it's, um, you know, understanding that that's a natural fear, but it's a a made up one that doesn't serve me. And when I come back to the importance of um, abundance and uh, understanding the power of abundance, you know, that's going to get me where I want to go a lot faster. Absolutely. So we're going to close this up, man. We're definitely going to have gateway to give gateway the number two give.net yeah linked up so, yeah, actually, get, get, I, I like gateway we may change our name to gateway to <laughs> oh, give but getaway, getaway getaway i don't know why i keep saying gateway getaway and that makes more sense actually <laughs> and well get, we are a gateway to giving as well but yeah. uh that there's no website that'll get us there so it, it's sure. get, getaway the number two give uh, dot com or dot net both go to the same okay, place. Okay, good. Thanks for correcting me on that too, because I kept saying that, and then I, when you said it, I looked at it, and that's my dyslexia playing in. But anyway, we're going to have that linked up in the show notes for sure. What do we not talk about that you want to ensure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation today? You know, I, I know for us to to raise a billion dollars for charities and uh, continue to change the way people are vacationing and traveling, we need a lot of help. So uh, if any of your listeners know of people who want to be a part of what we're doing, whether it's uh, helping us uh, achieve our mission or, um, you know, if, if any of them are associated or involved in organizations that can help or that we can help raise money for, or uh, if you just love to travel and vacation, 
um, and we can help you in any way. If I even if I can just give you some good advice on where to where to go in certain destinations, I'm pretty familiar with most of the major destinations, at least in North America uh, and uh, the Caribbean, Mexico. So um, reach out to me, um, and I think you're going to provide a link uh, on your page there, so everybody can can get to me if they want to. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. We'll definitely have that all linked up in the show notes. So, man, great conversation. Absolutely dig what you're doing. I truly appreciate it. Go out and live your life of abundance, Adam, and keep paying it forward, man. I truly appreciate it. Thanks, Wally. Great speaking with you, and thanks for having me on your podcast. All right, guys, your action step for today is to, one, get away. Just grab your kids, grab your wife, do something that you need to do, grab your spouse, and get away. And in some way, shape, or form, give. Now, I do encourage you to go to getawaytogive.net forward slash abundance and check that out. But rather you use those services or not, get away and give one way or another. Just figure it out. I'm telling you, it will make a huge difference in your immediate life and in your future. Now, go out and live your life of abundance and keep paying it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.